Hello, I'm going to talk about science and how much better it is than everything. Everything? Yes. Even art? Yes, especially art. Art is nowhere near as important as science. You can, there's only one direction in, in which you can have one without the other. Without art, we would all be a bit stiff and boring, but without science, we would all be dead, having all been outwitted by Neanderthals. We've had art and science. We've had art. The way I say art is so stupid. It's only three letters long, but I can still only be asked with the first one. Ah, oh, uh, uh, I'm supposed to be an artist. It's supposed to be what I do. What have you done today, Mike? Ah, uh, what? Ah, uh, that's not even a syllable, Mike. It's not even a moan. It sounds like a turtle's dying in your mouth. Well, maybe what is? Shut up. Well, we've had art and some. We've had art and science for ages, a really, really long time. Ever since we were little monkey things, we've had sticks and shiny things. Sticks have uses. You can perform tasks with them. Shiny things have worth for some reason. We just like them. We don't know why. But they don't help us survive and prosper, but if we hang on to them, I bet a million years from now they'll help us pass the time when we're bored. So for thousands of years we, there were sticks and shiny things. And then one day some crafty bugger came along and said, ah, there's a third thing. It's an invisible thing in the sky that you can't see, and it's like a shiny thing and like a stick. He called it his shtick. <laughs> you can only get the shtick when you die, and only if you do what I say. So sticks became science, shiny things became art, shtick became religion. And obviously, eventually, some rather smart monkeys figured out that shtick is actually nothing like a stick at all. If anything, it's the opposite of a stick because it does nothing. It has no uses. It has less uses than a shiny thing. It's like a shiny thing without the thing. And it's invisible, so how the fuck is it shiny? In the light of all this, it, it, it's, it d depresses me slightly that intelligent modern people can still endeavour to make the argument isn't faith in science just as blind as faith in religion now there's, obviously there's no shortage on the internet at all of talking heads asking and answering this question but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm going to have a whack at it because it's a question that doesn't seem to be going away it's a difficult question to answer but only because there's so much deeply wrong with it the phrase faith in science is a contradiction in terms because science deals exclusively with physical evidence and faith, faith deals explicitly without it. I, but a science claim, a scientific claim is these apparatus in these conditions will probably do this, right? A, a faith claim, a religious claim is my brain did this. Now you can scale that up to someone's brain did this or our brains did this but you can never scale it up to anybody's brain will do this because then it's not faith. That's where science is. Science can never go below anybody or it's not science. See, it's, it's, it's misleading to portray religion and science as two laterally opposed things like on, on a balancing on a scale. It really is more like they're layers in an, uh, an, an epistemological soup, the, uh, all, all of our methods for examining the world are, are in there, sort of, and they've settled into into layers over the millennia. Like uh, science is on the top, see, where everyone can get to it, right? <laughs> on the very top, there's the the, the, the maths, the, only, where the where the proof is, you know, the only really objective layer. Below that, there's some fairly rigid uh, Newtonian stuff thermodynamics and relativity, I don't know what order or anything, but towards the bottom of that of the science bit, there's the, the chaos theory and the quantum physics and whatnot, where the probabilities get really complex and objectivity becomes difficult. But only when objectivity becomes impossible do you get to the faith layer, right? And there are several layers of faith. First, there's the uh, physiological faith, the strange power of the placebo, and indeed the strange pl power of the intoxicant, you know, very effective, but doesn't work always or for everyone, so it is in this layer. 
But below that, you've got uh, object faith or scriptural pleading, where your idea of objectivity is worshipping an object <laughs> like a golden calf or a Bible. This book is more real than the reality in which I found it. You can see now how even the subjectivity is beginning to scarce, but at least we can study the book for evidence or lack of evidence. Uh, below that, you've got eyewitness faith. <laughs> I saw an unidentified object, therefore I saw an identified object. Aliens, you know. <laughs> or, you know, I saw a hallucination or witnessed a coincidence, therefore dead people are fully mobile and possibly sentient. That sort of thing. Below that, you've got dream faith. You know, if if, if you open your heart to Jesus you will feel him you know stuff that you can't test and doesn't make sense anyway <laughs> if you want to believe you will believe magic is real if you think it's real I love you just the way you are and other such insulting tautologies and only then at the very bottom of, of the soup do you get to the nasty gritty scummy layer of sediment called positive thought when you um, when, when, when you find yourself thinking I need positive things and your solution is to think I need positive things when your solution is exactly the same as your problem and you've successfully dismantled all possibility of human endeavor and you still think you're commanding the cosmic orchestra of from the comfort of your own atrophied amygdala well only then can you really call yourself most people at this point the conversation tends to get a little bit cagey <laughs> because the people who who make the the argument religion may be blind but so is science are, I tend to be religious or moderately, moderately religious or at least misguidedly enthusiastic about the paranormal but once you've explained to them that science isn't just a bunch of facts and figures, it's not just some stuff that was written down once, it is a method for discovering what anyone is free to discover. Science is not blind, it is the very act of seeing. What does a blind guy use to see the world? It's a stick! It's a stick! It's not a stick! It's not a shiny thing, it's a motherfucking stick! That's science! bitches and once you've established this to your antagonist that, that science by the very definition of the language they're talking is not blind they are invariably left having admitted that religion is blind it, it isn't a method it is just some stuff that was written down once if, if, if you need any faith to believe in science then it stands to reason you need blind faith to believe in religion ergo religion is the blind one and at this point they, they realize they've painted themselves into a corner <laughs> so then they think better take this metaphor for a brisk run well maybe blindness isn't so bad maybe it can be better to be blind than not blind no no like it's like saying it, it can be better to be irrational than rational uh, uh. No, no, that's another false dichotomy the, the idea that intuition is just as valid as ration no 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 intuition is ration it's a collision of rational processes working without supervision that's why it's so very often wrong but we're still inclined to believe it because it gets there first well I say fuck that too no argument can ever be made from intuition. Intuition is for when you're choosing a starter or having a fight with a goose. If we need a random number generated in a hurry, we'll ask you for your intuition. But until then, show your workings. If you can't, if you can't describe how you arrived at a thought, then you can't justify that thought. Listen to your brain, not your gut. Your gut doesn't know anything. Your gut is a shit machine. For he who thinks with his gut talks out of his ass. And I go, goodbye and fuck off.